Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack. Welcome to this week's top five episode where every single week we go through the despair of looking at the poll and seeing that the top five best maps once again got demolished by, well, the other opponent. <laughs> every week I leave it up to you guys to vote for what top five video you would like to see and most of the time people just vote for what is the opposite of the top five best maps because they want to see me complain. Well, here we go again. I'm crying. Now I'll admit that this week's episode is pretty fitting because of course last week we did look at the top five easiest here is to play in Overwatch. And that video went over surprisingly well because there were a lot of people that had their opinions that were very professional when presenting their opinions. They were like, yeah, bro, you whack. I do understand that this is your video and that this is your list. However, I am going to disagree on the fact that Reaper is not the easiest here to play because of the fact that he has a lack of range, which makes him- But then of course you have those people that have opinions also that think they're straight up facts and they're like- <laughs> So just remember that this is a top five list. I can't include every single hero because at that point it would be a top 30 list and that seems like an awkward thing to really do. A hero is going to get left out and if you think that hero should be included on this list, that's what the comment section is for. It's not to, well, okay, I'm going to be honest. When it comes to my videos, yeah, the comment section is basically just to roast me and my love life, but, but I would appreciate it if you didn't do that. But before we get onto the list that will eventually lead to the greatest roast session in this comment section, let's vote in the top right hand corner for next week's top five episode which is going to be between the top five best maps versus the top five best workshop game modes i figured the workshop just released this week and there are so much workshop game modes that honestly i've even covered in the past but i want to look at the best that are the most memorable the most fun so that when it does release for console you guys know which ones to play or 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 finally look at the top five best maps but now let's get into this week's top five Five episode which is going to be looking at the hardest heroes to play this isn't just going to be looking at their aiming mechanics and how hard it is to master but it's also taking into consideration their abilities how hard it is to gain the knowledge of what role that they fill there is much more that makes a hero hard to play than just based on is it hard to aim with them but that's not really going to be the case with this first hero that's going to be taking the number five spot because this hero is all about aiming this is the least forgiving hero when it comes to your aim mechanics if you suck at aiming you're going to suck with this hero and that's what makes this hero so hard ladies and gentlemen at the number five spot this is going to be the homegirl Widowmaker. now i won't spoil last week's episode in case you didn't watch it but i did have at the number one spot a hit scan hero that did require aim mechanics but they are the most forgiving hit scan hero in all of overwatch on the opposite side of the spectrum Widowmaker is the least forgiving hero if you're missing shots you're not going to be getting kills with your assault rifle you're not going to be getting kills with your ability you're not going to be getting kills or even making a big difference with your ultimate the only thing that you have to do which is the hardest thing to do is to hit headshots with Widowmaker from long distances if you're hitting body shots yeah that's great but you're building the enemy healer ultimate charge and what do you get in return the ability to see through walls which is Hanzo's ability like that's not a great return so basically if you want to succeed with Widowmaker you have to master hitting your shots and not just any shots hitting your headshots from long distances these tiny little heads all right I'm talking about soldier I'm talking about McCree I'm talking about Anna tracer oh, oh. <laughs> And don't even get me started when it comes to flank heroes when you're playing Widowmaker. If you're missing your shots, the enemy dive heroes will recognize that and not be fearful of you. The Tracer, the Doomfist, the Genji, heck, even the Pharah if they're feeling ballsy. They're going to come after you and destroy you. And you don't have a lot of protection in your own arsenal. And you're not really going to get a lot of protection from your team because they're all the way forward and you're all the way back, which is where you should be. So that is why it is so hard to play Widow. She She's so fragile and it's so hard to hit your shots because of the fact that you have to be so accurate on heads, not bodies, heads. But again, you really only have to worry about being accurate when it comes to Widowmaker and you can easily practice that over time. But with these other heroes, it's a lot more than just aiming. It's about being able to identify what your role is or what your main job is or mastering your abilities. And at the number four spot, that is literally the embodiment because I think the fourth hardest hero in Overwatch is going to be Hammond. Let me explain. 
explain, let, let me explain, okay? If you're one of those commenters that think Widowmaker, Hanzo, Soldier 76, and McCree are all heroes to play because they're hard to aim with, at least when it comes to Hammond, you're gonna have that intensive aim mechanics that is gonna be needed to be able to do good with him because you're not really gonna be securing kills with your grapple ability, with your seismic slam, sometimes your ultimate, but it's really gonna be the ability to aim for the heads. So that's the first semi-hard part about Hammond, but the hardest part about him is really mastering the abilities and what I think is something that a lot of people don't understand is super effective because what separates an all right Hammond from a godlike Hammond is the ability to use the grapple ability and be able to identify who and when to seismic slam it into the enemy back line. Because let me ask you this, how many Hammonds have you seen just seismic slam right in front of you and your whole entire team focused that hero? The Brigida stunned them or the McCree stunned them, there was a discord on him and you just instantly killed him. There is so much room for human error when it comes to Hammond because of the fact that you have to be super aggressive to be able to secure kills or at least be effective when it comes to Hammond because I can tell you when a Hammond is being effective when nobody's able to stop him when they're able to use the grapple to just run through use their shield and we're not able to kill them instantly and he's able to build ultimate charge he swings into action and then he releases his Hammond detonation bombs or whatever above us seismic slams and then we all get caught into the bombs and we die and we cry that is why Hammond is so hard is because there is a big skill gap when it comes to Hammond because the abilities are so human error-esque. But now let's talk about a hero that I am a little bit biased towards because of the platform that I play on. I already made a video talking about this hero when it comes to console, but I'm going to try to explain it on all platforms, not just console. The third hardest hero is going to be Ana. Let me get the obvious out of the way so I can shut all the people up that think aiming is the only thing required to do good in Overwatch. If you suck at aiming, not only are you gonna not get any kills on the enemy team, but your teammates are gonna get killed! You have to hit everybody, and yes, I mean everybody with your rifle. That means the jumping Winston all the way from the jumping Genji. And whenever I see an Ana waste their anti-grenade on me as Genji, I just cringe because I know they're not able to hit their shots. I, yes, I, that might seem a little bit selfish of me to think that the Ana should be able to hit your shots, but... When it comes to Zenyatta, you get 100% accuracy with your heals. When it comes to Mercy, you get 100% accuracy with your heals. When it comes to Ana, you get 50% accuracy when it comes to your heals. So that means you have to be so accurate just to be able to do your job as a healer. On top of that, you have no self-health regeneration. Now, yes, I do understand that heroes like Baptiste and Moira also don't, but at least they have abilities that not only benefit themselves when it comes to heals, but also their teammates. If you waste your anti-grenade on yourself, you just wasted what is one of the best abilities in the game. The ability to ensure that nobody's going to be able to heal on the enemy team, the ability to ensure that nobody's going to be able to get healed from the Zenyatta Transcendence in the Zarya Grav, that is so powerful. So you have to be very careful when you want to splash it on yourself or on the enemy team. Plus, you're this tiny 200 HP grandma. You are so fragile. You are so tasty to a flanking hero because if you're not able to hit hit your shots, or if you're not able to sleep them, then they're going to have a field day with you, which leads me into my next topic, which is going to be the sleep dart. This thing is not a hit scan. So you not only do you have to be accurate when it comes to the hit scan and projectile of your rifle, but you also have to calculate the projectile of the sleep dart. That is your only form of protection because we all know that your teammates don't protect you. <laughs> yes, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but this is expected of you when you play on it is to be able to protect yourself with the sleep dart. And it's somewhat hard to calculate that when you have a sleepy tracer on your nuts. Well, I don't think it's as hard as number two and number one. And even even though I said a joke earlier, I do believe that you do get a little bit of help and a little bit of protection from your teammates. You're not alone when you're doing your job, but when it comes to number two, number one, you're a one-man army. So not only do you have to look out for yourself, you also have to master abilities. You also have hard aim mechanics that you have to get down to. So at the number two spot, this is going to go to everyone's favorite lesbian, Tracer. First of all, aiming. You have to be good at aiming. If you're not, then yeah, you're going to suck as Tracer, but you have to be able to be good at aiming up close because if you're aiming anywhere from 10 feet or above you're gonna be tickling the enemy team is it it's just a little little tickle part <laughs> that that sounded gay i mean it's tracer i guess if i'm gonna be making those comments it's gonna be right now so but what i'm trying to say is that you have to be very up close and personal and in harm's way to be able to be effective and you also have to be accurate with your shots but that leads into the possibility of you getting killed 
because you are so close to the enemy team. Let's say a McCree, a, a, a Brigida, those are popular heroes that are obviously going to stop you as Tracer. So you have to be very careful on who you're going to pick, which takes a lot of game knowledge, which takes a lot of planning on your own part, not help from your team. You have to be able to identify who you're going to be able to focus on, who you're going to be able to one clip, all that kind of stuff. You have to be able to manage your abilities well, because if you're wasting blinks, then you have no escape plan if, say, someone does catch you with your pants down. While you do have a lot of escape plans, they could be easily wasted if you do not master them. And on top of all of that, she has only, only 150 HP. She is one of, if not the easiest heroes to kill in Overwatch right next to Baby Diva. But that, that, that's been really good. She has 100. And 50 HP, bruh. So that's really why I think she's one of the hardest heroes because you have to be a one man show. You have to know every single route, every single flank, where all the health packs are of every single map so that you don't waste your abilities. And you have to be able to manage your abilities very well so that you don't get so easily killed because of the fact that you have 150 HP. But I don't think she's the hardest. And some can make the argument that she is, but at least when it comes to Tracer, there's abilities that can forgive you for your stupidity. But when it comes to the number one, one spot, there is no forgiveness. There are so many things that if you mess up, you're going to die. That is why this hero is so hard, and this hero is gonna be none other than the girl Mercy! Genji, 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 you knew this, you knew that. I don't know if it's in the thumbnail, I don't care if it's in the thumbnail. Genji is the hardest hero. Now, a lot of people are gonna argue if he is the hardest hero, but they will agree with the fact that he is a hard hero for many different reasons. So let me just list them out. First of all, Aiming, I think that can be said with all these heroes. Yes, it is a part of them that makes them hard. It's not the only part, but not just any aiming when it comes to Genji. He's not a hit scan. He's a projectile. Whether you're two feet away or two million feet away, you have to be able to calculate where their stars are going. But then, of course, his abilities are difficult to master as well because the people that just learned Genji, yeah, they're going to want to deflect an Orisa shooting them that's right behind the shield or a Junkrat shooting their grenades. But the godlike Genjis are going to be able to identify, okay, Okay, well, what's going to be the most beneficial of my deflect? Is it going to be Fire Strike from the Reinhardt? Am I going to want to save it for the ulting soldier that put, could possibly have their ult right now? It's at those times that the godlike Genji is going to flourish with just their deflect. But don't even get me started when it comes to his dash, bruh. The dash is one of the most unique abilities because of the fact that it resets with every single kill. So, in a sense, you can get a six man with just dashes if used correctly. And then you have stuff like his double jump ability, the ability to climb. There is so much that you need to do with Genji, but it all leads up to his ultimate ability, which is one of the most powerful, but one of the least forgiving abilities, because if you don't use your dash correctly, if you don't go after the right hero, if you don't deflect at the right time, wall climb at the correct moment, everything is going to lead to you feeding. There is so much pressure when it comes to you as Genji, because of the fact that you could do so much, but if you do the wrong thing at the wrong time everything crumbles. Genji is a giant middle finger if you do not spend the quality time with him. He's sort of like me on a date. You have to spend quality time with me to be able to shut me up and stop me from crying. Anyway guys that is my list of the top five hardest heroes in Overwatch but I want to know what you think are their hardest heroes. Do you think it's Genji? Do you think it's Tracer? Do you think it's Mercy? I'll allow any comments because that's what the comment section is for. So I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come and bye.